Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to be sharing with you three new high-end Dollar Tree DIYs. In my last video, I had told you guys that I was thinking about some more really fun high-end looks, and these three are some of my favorite. I am so happy with how they turned out, and I cannot wait to share them with you guys. But before we get started, if you guys are new here, I would love to have you join us by subscribing down below. I'm starting off with this glass container that I picked up in the candle section at the Dollar Tree and then I'm also grabbing my white spray paint. So you guys have probably seen me use this a million times. It's the Rust-Oleum 2 times Ultra Coverage in the Ultra Matte and I'm obsessed with this one. It just is so user friendly. So I just gave mine a quick coat of spray paint and this is how it turned out with one coat. So I cannot recommend that spray paint enough. And next, I'm going to be using these foam floral blocks that I picked up at the Dollar Tree. They come in a pack. I've had these ones for a while. So you'll see here that this block was a little bit too big. So I just took a knife and just really carefully cut it. They're really easy to cut through, so you will not have any issues there. And then once it is cut down to size, I just took some hot glue. And I'm just going to apply that to the bottom just to make sure that it is nice and secure in that container. And then you just want to push it down and give it a couple seconds to dry. Next, I picked up two of these faux grass blades from the Dollar Tree in their floral department. Now, you could definitely get away with just using one of these, but since I had both, I figured why not use both? And you're just going to want to insert them into the foam. But you will see here that when I did that, they were kind of too tall. I mean, you could leave them, but I just felt like... It was just a little bit too high so i decided to just take them out and i just bend that wire you could cut it also but it's a little bit thick and hard to cut so bending it works just as well so once i had it bent i just reinserted it back into the foam and it was good to go and i just did that with both of them now you could definitely stop here if this is just going to be on a shelf you will not even see that foam block on the inside but I had some leftover Spanish moths from the Dollar Tree and you can find this in their floral department as well. So I figured that this would be good at just camouflaging that foam block and I will say I was really happy with the result. So I just needed a really small amount and you just want to kind of situate it right around your grass. Push it down and that is it. You are all done with this DIY. Like I said, so, so simple. The matte white really elevates the look of this DIY, but if you wanted to, you can definitely use matte black. I think that that would look really stunning as well and still give off a really high-end look. Next up is my favorite DIY from this video. So I'm starting off with this white plastic bucket that I got at the Dollar Tree and it's a really nice size. And then I also picked up some of this decorative nautical rope. So just one in the darker color. And then I did have to get about five or six in this lighter cream colored rope. And I'm going to start off by just unraveling it. So you'll see here, once you just take that black tape off the end of it, you can start to unravel your rope. And it's going to unravel into three separate strands. And it's just going to help the bucket not look as bulky, but it's also going to give you three times as much rope. So it works out really well. And for the bottom though, I'm going to go in with that darker rope. And for that one, I am not going to unravel it all. I'm just going to leave it the way it is. So I'm starting off on that bottom ridge of the bucket by just putting some hot glue and then I'm just going to take my time and just work in small batches that way the hot glue does not cool down and then the rope won't stick to it. So just take your time, work maybe in two to three inch sections as you go along and just slowly attach your darker rope to the bottom of your bucket. Once that first row was all glued on, I just started on my second row with that same strand. So I just overlapped it and continued gluing it the whole way around. And in all, that one strand provided about four layers on my bucket here. So I thought that that was a pretty good amount for the bottom color. And then for the rest of the bucket, I'm just going to be using that lighter rope that I will start on right now. So for that, I'm just going to be picking up right where I left off with that dark rope. And you will see that I try to make sure that my rope always starts and ends in the back of the bucket. That way I can kind of hide them in the end and you won't see all those break points. So there will be times where I'm wrapping around my rope 
and I'm going to have to sacrifice a couple inches of it just to make sure that I can stop directly in the back. That way you won't see in the front that kind of break point. So it does unfortunately make you waste a little bit of rope, but I do think that the overall look is worth it. So here's my bucket when I finished with one whole strand of that lighter rope, which was the three separated strands from before. And now I'm starting with my second one. So I did just go ahead and unravel that second rope. And once I did that, I just started wrapping it all around. And you will see here that for the lighter rope, I did not glue it the entire way around. It is not necessary. Once you have that bottom base, it's pretty secure. So you will only have to glue the lighter rope when you start a new strand and then when you stop the strand in the back. But that is it. And this is how far I got with three more of those strands and then I ran out of rope. So I did have to wait until I went back to Dollar Tree to pick up some more. So I have two here, but I do have a third one off camera. So all in all, I believe it took me about five strands of that lighter rope to finish this bucket and I did have a little bit left over. Here's how my bucket looked when I had it all finished. Now you can definitely stop here and just wrap the handles, but before I did that, I thought it would be nice just to kind of put a finishing rope around the edge. This is completely optional, you don't need it at all. I just had some leftover rope, so I figured, why not? So I just went ahead and I did put hot glue for the entire edge there and just worked in small patches again till I reached the end. To wrap the handles, I just put a little bit of hot glue on the inside of the handle and then I pressed my rope into it and then I put some hot glue on the opposite side and then I just started to wrap it around really tightly. So that is the only thing to kind of worry about here. You will not have to glue it the whole way just at the start and the stop point, but you do want to make sure that you're pulling it nice and secure and kind of pushing it down as you go. At first I wasn't pushing it down as I went along and it was getting a little bit gappy. So once you pull it nice and tight, it should look just like this. And then to finish it off, I just cut a little piece. I gave myself a couple inches to work with there and I just glued it towards the front. And then you'll see, I tried my best to kind of hide it against the rest of the rope on the inside of the bucket there. And then I just went ahead and repeated the same process for my second handle. Once you wrap that second handle, you are done with this DIY. And I honestly could not be happier with it. I think it turned out so adorable. I did want to mention though that if you want to take this DIY one step further, you can definitely paint the inside of the bucket if that harsh white is just a little bit too bright for you. Definitely go ahead and paint it a nice cream color, but I knew I was going to style mine with a blanket inside, so I didn't worry about that and I could not be happier with the end result. For our last DIY, we are going to be creating a custom candle using Dollar Tree products. So to start off, you're going to need some of these tall glass candles from the Dollar Tree. So in all, I did need three of them for the size candle that I made. You will see that I was melting down four of them later on in the video. I wasn't really sure how many I was going to need and I kind of just overestimated, but three turned out to be the perfect amount. And you will also need some wicks for this DIY, so you can definitely use the wicks that are already in those candles. But I had this pack on hand already. I had these from Amazon from previous crafts, so I'm just gonna go ahead and use these. I will leave these linked down below, but you can definitely use the ones that come in the Dollar Tree candles. So for this one, I'm going to be using four wicks because I'm making a rather large candle. And I forgot to mention, you will also need a bowl. So of course not plastic since we're making a candle. So this is just a porcelain bowl that I found at the Dollar Tree. And the reason I love this DIY is because it's really customizable. So if this black color is not your thing, go ahead and find a really beautiful bowl, something that you love. And you can even go to a thrift store for this or if you just have a old cereal bowl on hand or just something that you really like, or you can even do this with a teacup. There are so many possibilities. So this is just a really fun and versatile DIY. So I'm just gonna go ahead and glue my wicks into my bowl here. And like I said, this one's kind of big, so I thought four wicks would be a good amount. And now I'm just gonna get started on melting down my wax. So for this, I just put a big pot of water on the stove and you wanna make sure that your temperature is on low to low medium. You do not want it to be boiling because 
you will end up just getting a lot of bubbles in your wax and it just won't really look good in the end product so take your time have some patience with it and it will melt down it might take a little bit of time but trust me you will get there and again i just want to make sure you're being super careful these are hot glasses and hot wax so make sure you use proper safety measures so i like to use my oven mitts to make sure i'm not going to get burned and i like to take my time and to help the wax you might want to just kind of give it a helpful little push and for this i just like to use a wood craft stick since that is super safe and you don't want to use your fingers because you don't want to get burned these are the craft sticks that i use for this and i just like to keep these on hand because they're really helpful for a whole bunch of things so they're a really great find from the dollar tree and now i'm just going to be using that wood craft stick just to fish out those wicks since i will not be using those and now you just want to carefully pour your melted wax into your bowl or whatever you are using to make your candle and you could definitely use some essential oils at this point as well if you want to give it a really beautiful scent but i was just kind of making this as a decorative candle so i didn't really worry about that and after letting it cool overnight i had myself a big beautiful dollar tree candle i think that this one is just so much fun like i said really customizable choose whichever bowl you like you can change up the colors you can add whatever scent you like it is up to you so that is why this is definitely one of my favorite diys and i have made other dollar tree candles in the past but this is the largest one i've made and I just really really love it i think it looks so beautiful sitting out on my table i'm just totally obsessed with this one and i hope that you guys liked it too and that is it for today's diys i really hope that you guys enjoyed these high-end dollar tree diys i definitely have some new ones in mind that i cannot wait to share with you guys they are just so awesome so make sure if you are not yet subscribed that you subscribe down below and turn on that notification bell so you are the first to find out when i upload a new video thank you guys so much for watching to subscribe to my channel you can just click on my picture right here and make sure to check out this video for some more crafting fun Thank you.